Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Innistrad Crimson Vow previews have begun, they are in full swing now, and you will see a little influence when it comes to card values today based on some of those previews, but really, for some reason, Modern Horizons 2 cards are stealing the show this week. You're going to see four of the five elemental incarnations in the video, and at least one other surprise as well. Quickly before we get into it though, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order Innistrad Crimson Vow products there. They do have the Commander decks as well. They are on a separate page, so down below in the comment section, I'll leave two separate links. That way, you'll be able to find them easy. Also, they have a whole lot of other things on their website. Remember, if your order is over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use the promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you. And without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to begin, as we always do, with the standard legal spotlight. This week, the market is a little more turbulent compared to last week. It's still relatively calm, but I did have to up the threshold to $2 again for this week. We're not going to talk about any card unless it's moving at least $2 up or down. There are just two cards in the section. They're both losing value currently. First, we have Goldspan Dragon. It's down 270 to 4104. Now, this is retracting again after some recent strong increases. It still is seeing a ton of play in standard. This is in Is It Dragons, Teamer, Junt, and Rakdos Midrange. It's in Gruel Aggro, Grixis Dragons as well. Sometimes you'll see this in Is It Control or Gruel Werewolves. Also, it gets Commander Play and Prosper Tonebound and many other builds there. Ren and Seven, this is down 308 this week to 3111. This continues to settle down as packs get cracked, but again, it is seeing a good amount of play. Standard, this is in Mono Green Aggro, a very popular deck right now. This is also in Golgari Control, Gruel Werewolves, Sultai, Selesnia, and Bant Ramp. Sometimes you'll see this in Teamer Midrange. In Commander, this is an Omnith Locus of Creation and a number of other builds, old and new. And that quickly takes us to the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. This is where we're going to look at the Pioneer Legal cards that are moving the most this week. First, we have a card going down in value, Brazen Borrower. Now, this is the copy from the list, and it only was there during Zendikar Rising. It comes down 1057 this week to 3635. For a very long time, this particular copy of the card was very close in value to the original showcase copy, and then it kind of took off for a little bit. Now the price, again, is close to that original showcase one. Part of the reason this card could be softening up, too, is the fact that it's been reprinted in two different places recently. It is in the Mathis for Blockers Secret Lair, and you can also get a copy of this in the Azorius Spirits Pioneer Challenger deck. When it comes to gameplay, it is still all over the place. Pioneer, you'll see this in Is It Phoenix. Modern, it's in Crashing Footfalls. Living End, Is It Control, and much more. Legacy, you'll see this in Teamer Murktide Regent, Teamer Cascade, Ninjas, and more. In Commander, this is seeing increased play now in Lear Disciple of the Drown builds, too. First card going up in value is Idolin of the Great Revel. This is the copy from Journey into Nyx. It goes up 248 this week to 1563. In Pioneer, this is in Burn, also in Mono Red Aggro, and I think Pioneer is part of the reason this is moving as much as it is right now. There was a Pioneer Challenger Burn deck that came out not too long ago. Guess how many copies of this were reprinted in that deck? Again, if you guess zero, you are correct. So, yeah, I think there's a lot of players that maybe grab that deck. They need to upgrade it to make it competitive. They need copies of this card. Also, this is in Modern as well as Legacy Burn, and there's a lot of players playing those decks as well. Plus, it can get a tad bit of Commander playing aggressive builds at times. Next, we have Jaya's Immolating Inferno. Now, this is the copy from the list. Again, only there during Zendikar Rising. It goes up $3.65 this week to $5. And this is seeing increased Commander play in Vadric Astral Archmage builds. And that takes us to the Modern Legal Spotlight. First, we have some cards going down in value. Then we'll look at some going up. Snapcaster Mage. This is the copy from Ultimate Masters. It goes down 403 to 6428. And remember, this card joined the list recently with Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Now, granted, putting a card on the list isn't the best way to inject a lot of copies into the marketplace. But it does add some. And also, too, if this does stick around for another set or two, perhaps this card does stabilize down a little more. Now, when it comes to gameplay, still seeing a lot of play. Maybe not quite as much as it was seeing a number of months ago, but it's still in a lot of decks. Modern, you'll see this in Is It Grixis and Esper Control, plus more there. 
Legacy, it's in four color Bant and Jeskai control, as well as Jeskai Stoneblade and more. Plus, this is getting some increased commander play now and some Leer builds. Cavern of Souls from Avacyn Restored, down 408 this week to 84.99. Now, this joined the list with Kel Time, and it is still there now, even through Midnight Hunt. And that does go to show you how much of an influence the list can have if the card sticks around. By all means, right now, this card should be going up in value, if anything, because it is seeing a ton of play and it could be seeing more play in the future. First, let's talk about the present. Modern, you're going to see this in four-color elementals. Amulet Titan, Goblins, Humans, Eldrazi Tron, Mono Red Eldrazi, Azorius Spirits, and Merfolk. This also gets Legacy and a little Vintage play. Plus, it is a highly played Commander land. Now it's seeing some additional play in Will Help the Rock Cleaver, as well as Tovalar Dire Overlord slash Tovalar the Midnight Scourge decks. Of course, this is a good upgrade to Undead Unleashed, a very popular Commander deck that came out not too long ago. But now let's talk about the future. We've already seen some Crimson Vow previews, and we know that set is going to support a lot of tribes, especially vampires. We could see more vampire commander decks, if nothing else, in the future. They're going to want this card. Also, we got to see the front-facing commanders for the two commander decks, Vampiric Bloodline as well as Spirit Squadron. I'll put them on the screen now so you can take a look at them, but obviously Cavern of Souls will be a good upgrade to either of these decks. Next, we have Flooded Strand from Onslaught. It goes down 672 to 89.99. These Onslaught fetch lands did get hot back when Time Spiral Remastered came out. That said, did get players interested in retro frame cards, and then once things started to cool off, Modern Horizons 2 came out. That said, did shake up the modern meta. Players had to build new decks or scramble to update old ones, and cards like this that fit into a number of different mana bases got super hot. Now we're finally starting to see them calm down a little bit, like this example here. Flooded Strand is a fetch land. You know it's going to see a ton of play in many decks in Modern Legacy Vintage as well as Commander. Mystic Gate from Shadowmoor. This is down $7.95 this week to $39. Now this and the Double Masters copy have been super hot recently. This particular one did outpace Double Masters though. Now we're seeing it retract back a lot stronger. The Double Masters copy is relatively stable this week. Now the original reason Mystic Gate got hot is because of the modern play it was seeing. It's in Azorius as well as Jeskai Control, sometimes Reanimator, and it is a solid Commander mana base card too. You're going to see a theme here in this section. Another card that was spiking pretty wildly recently, now it's retracting quite a bit. We have Lich Lord of Onyx, the copy from Alara Reborn, is down 817 this week to 2575. The list copy of this card, which joined with Midnight Hunt, is still relatively stable this week, but I would expect that one to start losing at least a little value soon too. So the question is, why did this card get so hot to begin with? Well, it was because of the zombie support that we did get from Midnight Hunt, not to mention the commander deck that came along with it, Undead Unleashed. This is a great upgrade to that deck, and other players were just building fresh decks around Will Halt and adding this. However, now you see attention is starting to turn maybe to vampires. Chalice of the Void, the Modern Masters copy is down 426 to 7556. The Masters 25 copy, you might remember that one spiked really aggressively last week. It's down 903 this week to 7957, as more copies have now returned to the marketplace. So here's a yet again another example of a very hot card that is retracting after some recent spikes. This is another one that really took off during that Modern Meta shakeup. It is a fantastic sideboard card right now in that format. Being colorless, it can fit into anywhere it is needed. Plus, it continues to get some legacy and vintage play, as well as a little commander play. All right, on to the cards going up in value. First, we have Yogmoth, Ran Physician. This is the copy from Time Spiral Remastered. It goes up 231 this week to 2299. Now, this is in one key modern deck right now, Yogmoth Sacrifice. Maybe not the biggest deck in the meta, but still sees a good amount of play. It is a fairly popular commander as well, plus it is in the 99 of many different builds. It has seen some increased commander play too in Eloise Nefalia Sleuth builds. Kozilek Butcher of Truth is next. This is the copy from the list that was there during Strixhaven as well as Modern Horizons 2. It goes up 271 to 6649. Now this does see a little modern play in Osmo Food sideboards. It's also in Legacy Mono Green Cloud Post. But Commander is really the format where this does show up the most. You'll find this in Kozilek the Great Distortion builds and much more there. Additionally, this was in an Essex Fractal Bloom as well as a Joda Archmage Eternal deck on an Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast this week that could have brought some attention to it. Alright, I promised in the opening of the video we're going to see four of the elemental incarnations for Modern Horizons 2 today. This is the first one, it's Fury. It's up 277 this week to 1922. And this, like most of these things, are seeing a lot of play. 
Modern, it's in Crashing Footfalls, Four Color Blink, Four Color Elementals, Char Belcher, Mono Red Eldrazi, and much more. Legacy, it's in Blood Moon Aggro, Four Color Loam, Teamer Cascade. Vintage, you'll see this in Squee Hollow Vine. This is even getting a little commander play now in a few builds too. Teferi Time Raveler from War of the Spark. We haven't seen this card in a little bit, but it is back on the market watch going up 287 this week to 2295. It is banned in Pioneer, and there was a recent secret layer printing of this in Teferi's Time Trouble. However, it is seeing a lot of play, especially in Modern right now. It's in Azorius and Jeskai Control, Azorius Blank, Reanimator, Four Color Elementals, Indomitable Creativity, Omnith Builds, Thopter Combo, and much more. Legacy, you'll see this in Bant and Jeskai Control, Jeskai Stoneblade, sometimes Jeskai Ragavan, and more there. And in Commander, this is in Attracts a Praetor's Voice, and a lot of other builds in that format too. And finally in this section, we have the big modern legal mover of the week. It is Solitude, up $20.34 to $64.30. Again, here's a situation where the card is just seeing a ton of play. If players did not pick these up when Modern Horizons 2 came out, they're going back now and trying to get copies. In Modern, this is in Azorius Blink, Azorius and Jeskai Control, Four Color Elementals, Reanimator, Imperial Yorian, and much more. Legacy, this is in Death and Taxes. And it has been a fairly popular commander card in a number of different builds, too. And that takes us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular right now among collectors. If you're making any purchases in the Vintage market, be careful. There's always market manipulation occurring. Do your homework. But there is far less of that happening now compared to a few months ago, which is good. Another thing to remember when you look at those price tracking websites and you see values for some of these cards, Many times, especially when it comes to the older, more iconic cards, you're seeing a price that falls somewhere in between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies. It just depends on what's for sale at that given moment. So if you don't care about the card being graded, you could find a better price if you look around compared to what you see on those websites. Now in this section, the prices you see on the screen are going to be reminiscent of what you might find on a price tracking website. But if these prices on the screen don't line up with recent sales, I will point that out. Grim Monolith, not a big percentage increase, but maybe an indicator that something is going to happen again with this card. It is up 235 this week to 349. In Legacy, it's in Colorless Cloud Post. It's also in Mystic Forge Combo. Plus, it is a great commander card and combo enabler. It is seeing some more play in that format now in some old Stick Fingers builds. It's your own personal tutor going up 260 to 8257. This is in Legacy Doomsday. It also has seen increased commander play recently in some Lear builds. Grindstone from Tempest up 325 to 29.99. Now this is in Legacy Mono Red Painter, and those decks have been performing pretty well lately on MTGO. Also, this sees a little commander play, typically with Painter Servant. Gaius Gradle from Urza Saga. This goes up 356 this week to 1,043 dollars and 69 cents. Now again, we have a card here that is moving up slightly percentage-wise, but I do think it is worth noting that this card is moving up a little bit as opposed to moving down at all. Now when it comes to gameplay, you'll see this in Legacy Elves, Vintage Squee Hollow Vine, and it is a great commander card in a lot of different builds if you're lucky enough to have one. It's even seen a little more play recently in that format in Tovalar builds. And additionally, this was in the Essex as well as a Volo Guide to Monsters deck on that Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast I mentioned earlier. Force of Will, this is the one from Eternal Masters. It goes up 413 this week to $116.14. This is simply a staple found in tons of different decks in Legacy, Vintage, as well as Commander. A number of revised dual lands are on the move again. Plateau is up $6.99 to $3.49.99. Chrome Mox, the original Meriden copy, goes up $7.98 this week to $7.105. In Legacy, this is in the Epic Storm, Blood Moon Aggro, Curses, and more. Vintage, it's in Goblins. Also, it sees a lot of Commander play in many different builds. And again, it is seeing a little more play now in that format in some of those old Stick Fingers decks. Lord of Atlantis from Unlimited. It goes up $10.53 this week to $110. Disrupting Scepter from Unlimited up $10.93 to $66.84. Scrubland from Revised up $11.12 to $3.95.99. Soul Kanar of the Swamp King. The Legends copy up $12.50 to $92. Not for Modern Horizons 2, but this is Personal Incarnation. It goes up $13.25 to $69.99. Of course, this is the copy from Unlimited. Mox Diamond from Stronghold up $15.78 this week to $6.49.99. In Legacy, you'll see this in Lands, Naya Depths, Four Color Loam. It's also another solid commander card getting more play now in some of those old Stick Fingers decks again. 
Revelation from Legends of 1764 to 149.99. Bevictus says Mahdi from Legends goes up 18.99 to 119.99. Taiga from Revised up 22.36 to 446.95. Tropical Island from Revised up 23.59 to 739.99. Mana Flare from Unlimited up 49.44 this week to 125. Abu Jafar from Arabian Nights up $52 to $92.43. Old Man of the Sea up $60.53 to $408.97. Gwendolyn de Corsi up $62.99 to $639.99. Underground Sea from Revised up $66.76 to $942.36. Sunglasses of Urza from Unlimited up $72.48 to $157.47. Shivan Dragon from Unlimited goes up $118.93 this week to $299.91. Savannah, this time from Unlimited, up $126 to $906.50. Wheel of Fortune, the revised copy, goes up $15.45 this week to $380. The Unlimited copy, up $150.50 to $1,349.50. This is expensive, but it is a great commander card in many builds. When it comes to that Unlimited price, I have seen high-grade raw copies break $800, but I have not seen a high-grade graded copy sell for a while. Stands to reason when one does, it could hit that price. King Suleiman. This card is moving. It's up 15402 to 346 on paper. Although the last high grade raw copy I saw sell went for about 350, and the last high grade graded copy sold for about 750. Stasis from Unlimited up 20275 to 34945. Is that for real? I have seen high grade raw copy sell for about $200, and I have not seen a high grade graded copy sell for a little while. Again, the next time one does, it could hit or even pass the price you see on the screen. This does play well with a new card to Fairy Who Slows the Sunset, although many times these unlimited copies of cards tend to have a financial life of their own, independent of gameplay. Tundra from Unlimited goes up 205.80 this week to 1,282.50. Again, this is the price you would most likely pay for a high grade raw copy. The next time a high grade graded copy sells, it could go for quite a bit more than you see on the screen. Chaos Orb from Unlimited. Again, similar story. It goes up $450 to $2,450. I have seen high-grade raw copies go for about $1,500. So, yet again, maybe a high-grade graded copy could sell for more than you see on the screen. And finally for this section, we have Time Twister from Unlimited. It goes up $1,079.40 to $9,299. This price does fall in between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies of the card. I will say, though, with these Power 9 cards, they don't sell very often. So when you do see price trends up or down from week to week, typically those trends are more dependent on what condition the cards are for sale in that given week than anything else. And that takes us to the Commander Spotlight, kind of your best of the rest for the video. We're going to talk about a variety of different cards that are at least moving in part because of Commander. But of course, other formats could be driving prices as well, and I will mention those as we go through. Umazawa's Jite from Betrayers of Kamigawa. This goes up 203 to 2799. Another card we haven't seen for a while on the Market Watch, but it is a solid commander card and attracts a Praetor's voice and more. It is banned in modern, but does get legacy play in Death and Taxes and Jeskai Stoneblade. Academy Rector. This goes up 203 this week to 11593. This does see commander play in enchantment heavy builds. It looks like Crimson Vow is going to bring a tie in between spirits and enchantments. Here's a few examples of early previews we've seen where that's occurring. And since I've been making the video even, I have seen some other preview cards that tie into this theme. So Academy Rector is a card you might want to keep an eye on. Sliver Queen. Now this is the Silver Lord that is on the reserve list over the last few months. It has lost a good amount of value. This week it is creeping up a little bit, up 204 to 369.95. Not a huge percentage increase, but maybe an indication that it has stabilized. It can be a commander for a sliver deck, or it can be part of the 99. Maze of Ith from the Dark. This card stays hot. It's up 206 this week to 5227. Solid commander card, getting more play now in some Lind Cheerful Tormentor builds. Also, too, this was in a Zara Renegade Recruiter deck on that Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast I mentioned earlier. Plus, this does see Legacy play in lands, Slesnia Depths, and Four Color Loam. Thrumming Stone. This is the copy from the list that was there through Keltheim. It goes up 208 this week to 5470, and this has seen increased commander play in Florian Valderan Scion builds. Many times they run copies of Dragon's Approach. 
Here's the third one, Endurance, up 210 to 3398. And yes, this has seen some increased commander play at times in Tovalar builds, but of course you might know this better as a huge modern sideboard card. It can be found in some main decks too, like Four Color Elementals for example. This also gets a lot of legacy and vintage play in both main decks and sideboards. Another Modern Horizons 2 card, Archon of Cruelty, up 211 to 1468. This is getting a fair amount of commander play in various builds, plus it is in Modern and Legacy Reanimator. Third verse, same as the first, we have another Modern Horizons 2 card, and this is the fourth Elemental Incarnation today. It is Grief, going up 224 to 1597, and this is in Commander decks like Turgrid God of Fright slash Turgrid's Lantern, for example. In Modern, you'll find this in Living End, sometimes Reanimator. Legacy, it's a Reanimator. Vintage, it shows up in Dredge. Birds of Paradise from 7th edition. This one stays turbulent. It goes up 224 this week to 1998. Recently, the card was reprinted in the Artist Series Mark Pool Secret Layer with the original art. It is a huge commander card in many, many builds, getting a little more play now in some Tovalar decks. Additionally, this was in the Volo deck that was on the Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast this week. In Modern, you'll find this in Yawgmoth Sacrifice. Legacy, it's in Maverick and Aluren. Wand of Orcus, up 268 this week to 1150. You can find this one in the Adventures in the Forgotten Realms Dungeons of Death Commander deck. It is getting a lot more commander play now in zombie builds, though, due to the push that tribe did receive from Midnight Hunt. It's a good upgrade to Undead Unleashed. It's also in fresh commander builds around some new cards, like Will Health the Rock Cleaver, Gorex the Tomb Shell, and Gisa Glorious Resurrector. Additionally, I'm sure we'll see more zombie support in Crimson Vow. Here's one early preview on the screen as an example. Lake of the Dead is next. It goes up 281 this week to 114.24. This has seen additional commander play in some old stick fingers builds. It is on the reserve list, so it does not take all that much to make the price move. Sakashima Student, the Plane Chase 2012 copy up 235 to 5328. The Plane Chase Anthology copy goes up 287 to 5350. This is in Commander Yuriko the Tiger Shadow builds and more. As a matter of fact, this was another card in that Volo deck we saw on the Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast this week. On top of that, some are speculating that Ninjutsu could come back in next year's Kamigawa Neon Dynasty set. Temporary Truce goes up $2.99 to $20.58. This does see a tad bit of Commander play, but it is yet to be reprinted, and it is a little dry online this week. Griffin Canyon. Now, this is another card that just sees a tad bit of Commander play, typically in Changeling decks. It goes up 376 this week to $14. I did, however, see a conversation on a commander message board talking about an Oswald Fiddlebender build that gets Maskwood Nexus into play. Then they need support cards, and this is one of the cards that was mentioned. That alone could have brought enough attention to it to make a reserve list card jump a little bit. Phyrexian Altar from Ultimate Masters. It goes up 461 this week to 8701. Great commander card and combo enabler in various builds. Many players are using this as an upgrade now to Undead Unleashed, or putting it in fresh builds around Will Health. Plus, I have seen this in some new Commander Eloise decks, too. Beyond that, this also showed up in that Zara deck on the Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast this week. Radiant Archangel at $5.96 to $21. Now, this could be the start of a targeted reserve list buyout, of course. It does see a tad bit of Commander play, sometimes as a Commander, but this is a pretty big jump. There is another thing to consider, however. This actually could play very well with Spirits. We know Crimson Vow is going to support the Spirit Tribe even more. We saw some previews earlier in the video. And of course, one of the Commander decks is called Spirit Squadron. We saw the front-facing Commander earlier as well. And on top of that, Innistrad sets tend to give at least a little support to Angels. Here is one example of an early preview card we've already seen that does such. You knew he had to be here. Last card in this section is Edgar Markov from Commander 2017. It only comes in foil up 10.05 this week to 89.99. Now, good news and bad news, there is a reprint coming, but it is a judge foil, so there's not going to be a lot of copies entering the marketplace. This is an extremely popular vampire commander. We know he's the one that's getting married to Olivia in Crimson Vow. And, of course, there's going to be tons of vampire support in that set, as well as in the commander deck Vampiric Bloodline. Now, earlier I showed you the front-facing commander from that deck, but we've already seen a lot of vampire support from the main set previewed as well. Here's just some examples. The card in the upper right-hand corner is a transform card, so I did want to point that out. Look at Soren the Mirthless leaning against the wall there, looking all casual. And if you haven't heard yet, there's also some variations on at least some of the cards in the set based on Bram Stoker's Dracula, very similar to what they did not too long ago with Godzilla. 
And that brings us to the premium spotlight. I say this every week. There's so many cards moving in the premium market. We can't cover them all. But I try to pick a few cards, just a handful, to give you a taste of what's going on out there. And I try to choose things that are moving because of current events. Cards that are seeing more gameplay, or maybe they're moving because of a preview card. With that being said, I did choose three cards this week. And much like the vintage section, the prices you're going to see on the screen are very reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website. But if that price doesn't match up with recent sales, I'll let you know. Believe it or not, this first card here, Solitude, those four copies that you see listed on the right side of the screen, I have seen true sales reflecting those prices. The borderless copy is up $13.51 to $75. The regular foil is up $21.75 to $98.64. The borderless foil is up $25.57 to $124.95. And the pre-release foil goes up $34.13 to $94.98. Next, we have the Judge Foil copy of Gaia's Cradle. Always an interesting card to keep an eye on. It goes up just a little bit this week, $69.41 to $3,086.50. Again, not a big increase, but it does tell us something about the card. It tells us it's not really going down all that much right now. This price is between high-grade raw and high-grade graded copies. And finally, we have Grim Monolith. This is the foil copy from Ursa's Legacy, going up $200 to $4,499.99. I have seen high-grade raw copies sell for about $2,500. I have not seen a high-grade graded copy sell for a while, but I could see one hitting this price or at least getting close in the near future. That does it for this week's episode. I thought we would see a bigger impact from Crimson Vow, but I guess I'm not too surprised. It is falling in line with what we saw from Midnight Hunt. I do think players do want to see more preview cards, and they also want to find out what's getting reprinted in the list, as well as what could show up in the Commander decks. So there does seem to be a little hesitancy out there. But I think next week when we know more about what's in the set and definitely the week after, and of course once the set does get released, I do think we'll see much more of an influence in these videos, kind of like we saw with the zombies and the werewolves last time around. Anyway, if you're still here, thanks for sticking with me. I do appreciate that. As always, stay safe out there. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.